Don't shoot taken blights like this, jump on top of them and it makes you immune to damage. From using the wrong ghost mods to even jumping incorrectly, here are 70 more things you might be doing wrong in Destiny 2. Number 70 is not shooting the void tornadoes that are created by tormentors. The void tornadoes unleash all these crazy waves that deal a ton of damage, but you can completely counter them by just shooting them and making them fly away to stop bothering you. Hit the like button if you didn't know this. Don't you hate those annoying Vex who put up their immunity shields to regenerate all their health? Well, it turns out there's a way to completely prevent them from ever doing this. If you hit their heads, they will lose their ability to put up a shield or heal. Instead of holding down the button to open the director, it's faster to just tap the inventory and then director button. This will open up your map or director instantly and save you a bit of extra time. If you find yourself dying a lot to ships like Threshers or Dropships, chances are you're doing something wrong. You can easily counter most ships by shooting their missiles out of the air, and you can also completely destroy the weapons on both Cabal and Fallen Dropships by simply doing enough damage to them. When fighting against Taken enemies, a lot of players tend to aim down sights because, well, that's what most of us do without even thinking about it. However, due to a strange mechanic, it's actually best to only hip fire when you're fighting against the Taken. But before we talk about that, take a look at this cool new animated series. If you're a fan of adventure shows or anything that involves dark fantasy, I think you'll like this new limited time series that is taking place in the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. With a new episode dropping every week, the Call of the Arbiter series looks amazing and it really expands on the narrative in the world of Raid. So far, it's very popular with millions of views on every episode, and a new one drops every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern. I really like how each episode has a compelling narrative that builds meaningful backstories to the champions in Raid. Like instead of just seeing champions in game, I now see actual characters and it feels like I know a lot more about them. Raid Shadow Legends continues to celebrate a bunch of Call of the Arbiter related features with new champions. One of these new characters is named Artak and his awesome in-game champion can actually be obtained for free by just logging into the game for 7 days before July 24th. Using my special link in the description, new players will also get a bonus starter pack with the amazing loot that you can see here. I think you guys will really love the new animated series and all of the champions waiting for you in the game. So the reason why you don't want to aim down sights when fighting the Taken is because they seem to teleport much less often when you're hip firing, and even if that isn't the case, it's still much easier to track them and switch between targets when you're not aiming down sights. I've seen a lot of people make mistakes when leveling crafted weapons and completing catalyst objectives. What you should be doing is playing on a hunter with the Shadow Shot Deadfall Super. Then simply hit one enemy with your weapon and you will cause all of the tethered enemies to die. And the best part is, every single enemy that dies will give you progress on your weapon. Even if you're not a hunter main, it's definitely worth swapping to your hunter for this strategy. Also, if you have access to it, Shirochi in the last wish raid is still the most efficient way to farm. If you want a checkpoint, just join our Discord because we have access to bots that are constantly holding important checkpoints, including Shirochi. If you're still going into your collections and individually marking stuff as seen, you're kind of doing it wrong. You can simply mark everything as seen all at once from the main collections menu. The next thing you might be doing wrong is looking up your PvP opponents before you play them. Please don't do this, it will really just lead to you being intimidated by their stats, and then you'll start playing scared which will negatively impact your performance. Just approach each game with confidence, and if you lose, that's totally fine. Destiny has a setting called Full Auto, and I can't really think of a reason why you wouldn't want to turn this on. You can just hold down the trigger forever, and it works with every single weapon in the game. And while you're there, you might also want to turn on Full Auto Melee, especially if you use something like a Glaive. Speaking of glaives, you're making a mistake if you're not holding down the shield button while attacking. Believe it or not, it will actually make you swing your glaive much faster than normal and this is a huge advantage. If you have more than one class item, just go ahead and delete them. Class items do not have any unique properties other than the minor exception of raid armor, so in most cases there isn't a reason to keep more than one class item per class. Whatever you do, definitely do not ever store class items in your vault because that's just a total waste of space. Instead of opening up your inventory to check the progress on your exotic catalyst, simply pull out your ghost and you can track it from there. To set this up, go to your triumph section and then select whatever objective you are working on. Something a lot of people do wrong in every FPS game is focusing too much on their crosshair instead of on the target. 
According to widely accepted aiming theory for gaming, it's better to fixate on the target. Sometimes people go around searching for a scannable item and they really struggle to find it. However, the ultimate solution here is to just pull out your ghost because he will look in the direction of the scannable and guide you straight to it. For whatever reason, players love to swap their weapons over and over and spam the swap button like this. However, doing this is actually a huge mistake with potentially devastating consequences. We actually tested this in one of my Mythbuster videos, and it turns out that swapping your weapons like this can temporarily jam them and make them refuse to shoot, which can easily lead to your death, especially in PvP. Because this is my second channel and it's still very new, a mistake that 98.3% of you are making is not being subscribed. For real though, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. If you're not hitting level 100 every season, make sure that you're using the 12% XP bonus mod on your ghost, and I'd also encourage you to consider bounty multitasking. It's pretty easy to just pick up a few extra bounties every day and complete them when you do random activities, and you'll gain so much extra experience over time from doing this. Also, this next one should help you accomplish this. If you're still walking around to pick up bounties from all the vendors, there's a way to do it much more efficiently. In the Destiny app, just tap on bounties and then you can pick them all up without ever leaving orbit. For some reason, a lot of players, myself included, naturally want to hold the forward button while driving a sparrow. Unfortunately though, this does absolutely nothing, so you might as well break this useless habit. I see a lot of people out there who don't pay attention to game sounds, or they just don't hear them because they have their music or dialogue set way too high. Contrary to popular belief, there are some really important sound cues in this game, especially when you're playing in the Crucible. From invisibility to super activation to even super deactivation sounds, there are some essential sound effects that top players will always pay attention to, and you probably should too. Do not use stasis on suspended enemies. I wish this wasn't true, but unfortunately freezing an enemy will unsuspend them. So if you have a teammate using strand, you might want to consider not using stasis. If your fire team is using more than one wither horde, you guys are doing it wrong. The damage over time does not stack more than once, so you're basically missing out on a ton of damage if you have multiple players using it. The maximum damage wither horde can do is one direct impact and one pool beneath the enemy. A lot of newer Destiny players are really resistant to using third-party apps, and in my book this is a pretty big mistake. Stuff like Destiny Item Manager and D2 Armor Picker are amazing tools that are really easy to use and will simply make your Destiny experience better. Like for example, this website can analyze all of your armor and tell you the most optimal stat build in just a few seconds. Speaking of stats, I see a lot of people making extremely bad choices when it comes to their stat distributions and layouts. Their stats look like this, and they are wasting a ton of extra stat points. Like you really don't want your stat numbers to be ending with 9 or 8 or something because anything less than a multiple of 10 doesn't help you. Also, running low resilience in PvE is almost always a mistake. Since the damage resist is just so incredibly valuable, every build on every character should utilize high resilience in PvE. ADS modifier is a setting that changes the speed of your aiming, but if you have this set above 1.0, you're definitely doing it wrong. This should always be set below 1 because this allows you to move around rapidly and still have precise aim. Did you know that you can invite people using this special invite menu? It's a lot faster than inviting someone the traditional way. You can access it from orbit with whatever button the game tells you in the bottom right hand corner. This next one is a classic mistake that I see a lot of players making, and no joke, if you're someone who still makes this mistake and you fix it, you will die way, way less frequently. Especially in endgame content, you really need to deliberately play cover and not get caught out in the open. I see so many people like this guy just flying in like they don't have a care in the world, and it leads to them dying every single time. If you're struggling with this, try implementing the 40-60 rule, where 40% of your screen is always in cover. If you do this, I guarantee you'll die like 10 times less often. Two other settings that I regularly see people getting wrong are sensitivity and field of view. Sensitivity is a very personal setting, but players often make the mistake of thinking that higher is better or they just copy someone else's sensitivity and hope for the best. In reality, there are advantages and disadvantages to both high and low sensitivities, so you should really experiment yourself and find out what you prefer and what fits best with the way that you like to play the game. The same goes for field of view, higher is not necessarily better. If you're looking for a full breakdown, I made another video about field of view and I'll link it in the description. If you're trying to press your melee at the right time to catch the strand kunai melee, you're definitely doing it wrong. Simply hold down the melee button and the game will automatically catch it for you every single time. 
Especially in 6v6 crucible modes like Control, a big mistake I see in almost every game is flipping the spawns. This means pushing so far into the enemy territory that they start to spawn in your territory. In addition to screwing over any of your teammates who happened to have just spawned over there, you're really messing up your team's control of the map. In almost every situation, it's better to just control the center of the map and try to trap the enemy in one spawn at a time. When it's clear that your team is dying in a raid, please don't be the guy who just runs around and tries to survive for as long as possible. Your team will really appreciate it if you just wipe and get it over with instead of wasting everybody's time. This next one might be a little controversial, but I think there is some truth to it. You don't really need that perfect 5 out of 5 weapon for PvE content. Like sure, it's nice to have a perfect roll, but especially when it comes to stats and barrels, the vast majority of Destiny players will not be able to tell the difference and it's really not worth the grind. However, getting that perfect 5 out of 5 roll is much more important when it comes to competitive PvE content like a world's first race or any type of PvP. A huge mistake I often see people making is using certain mods that actually do nothing. Like for example, in Crucible, the following mods do absolutely nothing and you should definitely not use them. Something that almost everybody does wrong is communication in voice chats. They complain about dying to something unfair, they clog up the comms with unnecessary random noise, and they make meaningless PvP callouts like he's over there and he's one shot when he's actually like 80% full health. A mistake that I made for the first few years of my Destiny career was actually jumping incorrectly. You see, if you hold down the jump button as you jump, it actually makes it so that you jump faster and further. I never used to know this, and I always wondered how people moved so fast, so if you didn't know this, your movement will now be much improved. The next thing you might be doing wrong is clogging up your inventory with tons of stuff that can either be consumed, unlocked, or dismantled. You probably have a bunch of random ghost projections and other cosmetics that you just forgot to unlock, or you might have tons of other random things like Finest Matter Weave or Rainmakers. You can dismantle these to just get tons of glimmer and enhancement cores. There are also plenty of old things like this that no longer serve a purpose and you should probably just delete them as well unless you want to hang on to them for sentimental reasons. If you're not equipping Iron Banner related things while playing in the Iron Banner, you're definitely doing it wrong. You get a huge reputation bonus by simply equipping 5 Iron Banner things and an emblem, and instead of equipping Iron Banner gear, you can actually just transmog your favorite armor. You can also double dip here by using Iron Banner armor and an Iron Banner ornament on the same piece and the game will count it twice. Another easy way to reach 5 out of 5 Iron Banner pieces is to equip a heavy weapon since you won't be using it too much anyway. This is a pretty common one. A lot of players put the dexterity mod on the wrong weapon. In order to maximize the speed at which you draw and stow your weapons, you always want to put the dexterity mod on whichever weapon has the slowest handling. So for example, if you want to draw your energy shotgun faster, but your kinetic primary has low handling, you'd actually want to use a kinetic dexterity mod. Xur is pretty amazing, and especially if you're a new player, you're making a mistake if you don't visit him every weekend. He often sells some pretty amazing rolls, and you can also turn in his random exotic every week for a chance at a big upgrade on some of your favorite exotic armor. I don't know why people do this, but please do not try to fight a bubble or a well in PvP unless you have a really good plan on how you're going to take them down. It sounds kind of weird, but like 9 times out of 10, the best play when you see a bubble is to just turn around and walk in the opposite direction. A lot of people are actually using their wrong ghost mod for armor focusing. This one is a little confusing, but once you understand this, you will start getting much better stats on your armor. So for example, say you want to go for high mobility and high resilience in your build. If this is the case, you actually don't want to focus either of those stats on your ghost mod. Destiny stats are broken up into two groups like this, and since you want two of the stats that are in the top group, you actually want to focus one of the stats in the bottom group. This will make it so that you have the highest possible chance of getting an armor piece with both high mobility and high resilience, and you'll have the added benefit of being able to select the stat you want in the bottom group. This next one is aimed more at new players, but make sure you always spend a couple seconds making a basic loadout with good mods for whatever you're about to do in the game. Mods make an absolutely massive difference in your performance, and you wouldn't believe the amount of people I randomly see just using no mods or really bad mods for their activities. Especially with the loadout system, equipping mods has never been easier, so I promise it's worth taking a couple seconds to equip appropriate mods for whatever activity you're about to take on. If you're ever unsure whether an enemy is low enough to use a finisher, don't risk your life by running up to them and trying to press your finisher button. Instead, look for a little circle by their nameplate. If the circle is there, that means that they can be finished. 
I can't believe I have to say this next one, but bank your moats in Gambit. The amount of people I see to this day who try to save up to 15 moats and then die is astounding. Please, just bank your moats and I promise this will make your teammates love you. I see a lot of people opening up their menu, going over here, scrolling down, just to change their character or to close the game. However, it's a lot faster to just press whatever button is listed in the bottom right hand corner of your orbit screen so that you can access this mini menu which can do all of the same things. Something that YouTube viewers often do wrong is blindly following the loadout and weapon suggestions from content creators. At the end of the day, if you like using a certain weapon, you should just use it and nothing else matters. If it's fun for you, it does not matter if some YouTuber said that it sucks. Destiny has gone through a lot of weapon system changes over the years, so this next one is understandable, but I still see a lot of people misnaming the different weapon slots on their characters. This one is the power slot, aka the heavy slot, this is the energy slot, and this is the kinetic slot. I know we have strand and stasis weapons here now, but Bungie still calls it the kinetic slot, so I guess I'm just gonna go with that. This next mistake is very common, and it brings me an immense amount of pain every time I see someone doing this. For whatever reason, some players are extremely reluctant to use their heavy ammo and their supers. When you consider stuff like heavy ammo scouts and finders and even aeons, you can have nearly infinite heavy ammo even in hard content like Grandmaster Nightfalls. So just use your heavy ammo, you should never be bringing your heavy or your supers back to orbit at the end of an activity. And also when it comes to supers, you are actually hurting your team if you don't cast your super to make orbs. If everyone on a team uses their supers regularly, everyone will get more orbs and then everyone will be able to chain supers more often. My friend Misum at TDT has a video series that I've been featured on several times now where we review people's spicy clips. The most common critique that we've had in literally every episode is that people are always making the mistake of bunching up in PvP. There are so many different AoE abilities and supers in this game that bunching up with your team is never a good idea. But don't get me wrong, you want to play relatively near your teammates so that you can set up crossfires with them, you just don't want to be completely on top of them cause then you'll both die to something like a cloud strike. If you're just walking up to rally flags and then rallying in difficult PvE content, you might be interested to learn that you can do this in a slightly more efficient way. If you go equip some reserve mods, you can gain tons of extra ammo when you rally, and then you can simply unequip them and keep all of your extra ammo. This is extra easy to do with the handy loadouts feature on the character screen. I know the typical Destiny loadout involves one primary, one special, and one heavy weapon, but if you're more of an advanced player, you would be making an error by not considering a double special ammo loadout for PvE. These can be extremely powerful for more experienced players, and you probably won't run into any ammo economy issues if you manage your ammo well and use appropriate mods. This next one is a little bit depressing, but I think we all know it's true. It is a mistake to go loot most of the planetary materials and chests. At best, you're gonna get like 2 glimmer and it's probably not even worth the time that it takes to run over to the chest. Especially when it comes to angry people on social media, I see way too many players treating this game like it's a job, and that's definitely the wrong way to go about it. Destiny is meant to be fun, so if you're not having fun doing something in the game, just go play another activity or take a break for a few hours. This next one applies more to endgame PvE, but it might be a mistake to not take the time to learn boss health gates and what triggers the extra adds to spawn. For example, on certain bosses they will spawn groups of enemies once they reach a certain percentage of their health, so you'll want to know this so that you don't accidentally burn them down too fast and then cause a million adds to spawn all at once and overwhelm you. This next one is really only for newer players, but if you're not using an exotic armor piece at all times, what are you doing? There is literally no reason you should ever not use an exotic. I've seen a lot of chatter about artifice armor lately, and I think people put a bit too much importance on it. The only special thing about artifice armor is that it gives plus 3 to a single stat, but honestly that doesn't matter unless the armor piece is also an incredible role. Like a regular 68 stat armor is still going to be better than a 62 stat artifice armor. I know this can be a tough habit to break, but you're doing it wrong if you don't properly manage your postmaster. If it's just constantly overflowing, you'll be missing out on thousands of legendary shards and millions of glimmer over time, and you'll probably lose some great weapon rolls that you didn't even know were there. So just clean out your postmaster every now and then, I promise it's worth your time. If you're someone who is actively making this next mistake, fixing it will completely transform what you're able to accomplish in all first-person shooters. 
If you run around with your crosshair aimed at the sky or the ground or frankly anywhere that isn't on an enemy, you're definitely doing it wrong. You want to keep your crosshair where you think an enemy will soon appear, so that way you can react about a million times faster when they actually show up. This next one is practically a meme at this point, but not learning about heroic public events is a pretty big mistake. Believe it or not, zero heroic public events are random, and they all have unique triggers that you should probably learn. A really common error in all games, not just Destiny, is blaming the game for your own mistakes. Like 95% of the time you die, it's probably your own fault, and if you consistently blame the game, you're just going to be stunting your own growth and improvement as a player. Don't get me wrong, there are some times like this example where it's not your fault and the game is just screwing you over, but most of the time, just take responsibility so that you can improve. Another weapon leveling mistake that a lot of people tend to make is forgetting that activity completions actually reward a lot of progress. Like I know this can be a hassle, but you can save yourself a lot of time if you just swap over to your crafted weapons at the end of every activity because the progress will add up really fast over time. That way, you can spend more time gaming and less time farming. This one has practically become an inside joke with the community at this point, but many players make the mistake of not passing the ball to a teammate in the Corrupted Strike. Passing the ball makes it much more powerful, so you should definitely do this. There's this really handy way of learning all this information about your gear that I don't see most people using. Instead of inspecting an item and manually going over to all of its perks, you can instead reveal all of this awesome information all in one place by just holding down the left trigger on console or E on PC. I promise this is not your English class, but I always see people spelling a few Destiny words incorrectly, like roll instead of roll, peak instead of peak, and Nezarak instead of Nezarak. In almost every game that I play, I constantly see players on my team making tons of unnecessary noise in PvP. Like if you're just jumping, shooting, and using your abilities for no reason, you're just telegraphing your position to the entire enemy team and asking for them to come gang up on you. This next one might be a little bit depressing, but honestly, I think it is a mistake to expect Destiny PvP to be balanced. In the long history of this game's PvP, it has never been truly 100% balanced. Once you accept that Crucible is a wild space magic simulator where winning doesn't really matter, it becomes a whole lot more fun. And that's another mistake that people make. People take 6v6 modes way too seriously. It's a casual playlist, so just play for fun and nothing else really matters. I personally make this next mistake all the time, but icons for Arc and Kinetic are oddly similar and it's very easy to accidentally equip the wrong one. So after you watch this video, check your builds to make sure you are actually using the mod that you think you are using. When the opposing team summons a primeval in Gambit, the game opens up an invasion portal. However, if you invade right away, you're absolutely doing it wrong. Instead of rushing in there the second that it opens, wait for a bit until your opponents have done some damage to their primeval. That way, when you do invade and take out some players, it will heal the primeval and set their team back in a meaningful way. This next one is really problematic and it seems to be very widespread in our community. Tons of people are using really suboptimal settings in Destiny 2, and some of these settings can seriously hurt your gameplay. So if you want to learn which settings you should turn off, watch this video on your screen now. And there you go, now that you know all these things, you'll be able to play more efficiently and make less mistakes in Destiny. Subscribe and I'll catch you next time.